Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, YouTube beef. Today, we're going to react to Kyle with his video, Bobby's Perspective Exposed. If you're new to this channel, back in the day, I used to do anti-vegan content. And if you do anti-vegan content, the vegans get very triggered, of course. They're very emotional people. And therefore, there were plenty of vegan YouTubers that would do hate videos about me. And I have to say, I missed it. Because in the past few months, I've been doing predominantly Islamic reaction videos. So therefore, I'm very curious to hear what Kyle has to say about me. With no further ado, let's have a look. Like Alrighty, it. guys. Today I want to talk about Bobby's nice perspective try. because this is the perfect example of what Bro. not to do if you have a question. Instead oh, of okay. going to his priest or looking up online his questions about the Trinity and Orthodox Christianity. But that's what I did. Moreover, I went to Mount Athos and talked to the priests and monks over there about the Trinity. I talked about the Trinity in my church and obviously, duh, I looked it up online. Yes, I have access to the internet as well, Kyle. Moreover, I looked for the Trinity within the Bible especially and of course, I could not find it. Thanks for the advice. He instead makes a video called I am a heretic. I reject the Trinity, but I'm still an Orthodox Christian. Three things I can't. So again, Kyle makes it look here as if I haven't done all of those things prior to making the video. As if I just woke up one day, hmm, I can't accept the Trinity. And then the next day I did a YouTube video. Of course not. I did extensive research, actually two years straight before I even thought about making such a video. Three things I can't accept in Orthodox Christianity. He can't accept veneration. He can't accept veneration. communion. It's not worship. Eucharist, the body and blood it's of Christ. veneration. But then he still says, well, I'm still an Orthodox Christian. I actually don't claim to be an Orthodox Christian any longer. However, I emphasize that I come from an Orthodox Christian background. I believe that you converted to Christian Orthodoxy pretty recently. So therefore, I understand, of course, your vigor and your excitement. Nevertheless, I was born into Orthodoxy. I was baptized at birth. And coming from the Balkans, to be precise, Northern Macedonia, comparing my worldview to the other so-called Orthodox Christians within my family, within my surroundings, I can tell you that I'm more Christian than they are, even though by name, of course, they will say that they are Orthodox Christians without even knowing about the Trinity, without even knowing about the Theotokos or whichever fancy word you might want to use. All I pointed out is that culturally, I'm an Orthodox Christian. And nowadays, if you look at Orthodox Christians, you will see that they have very little knowledge about their own doctrine. That's it. Okay, this is exactly what not to do. You have called yourself a heretic. A heretic goes out and they teach others the error. Kyle, I know it is hard to wrap your head around it, but there is such a thing in this day and age which we call sarcasm. Try it sometimes. Sprinkle a little bit of humor on top if you will. I'm obviously not Arius that spreads the doctrine of Arianism. No, Kyle, yet again to clarify it for you, I'm not a heretic Literally, I guess I have to give sarcasm disclaimers from now on. Go to your priest. You should go to someone that you trust and try and get did. your questions answered instead of teaching it to thousands of people. That is irresponsible and that's dangerous for your soul. Okay. And but what am I teaching really? You do realize that I'm simply reacting to Islamic videos, learning myself about it, learning myself about an already established religion. I'm not teaching Islam, nor am I teaching Christianity or a different version of Christianity. If you look at the history of his channel, he used to do anti-vegan content. Yes, but then good he times. started doing some videos about Christian reacts to Islam. And those videos got really popular. So for the past six True. months, his entire channel is just praising Islam. If you go even further back in time, you will see that I always did what I was into at the time. So there was a time when I was promoting raw veganism on my channel. There was a time about fasting. There was a time about bodybuilding. There was a time about spirituality. Alex, etc, etc. So ultimately, welcome to the channel. Welcome to Bobby's perspective. This is what this channel is about. Yes, me, Bobby here being interested in a subject and talking about it. So to call You're yourself welcome. a heretic and then to make all your videos 
Praising Islam, a false religion, is dangerous and irresponsible. Dangerous and irresponsible. Can you offer any proof why Islam is false? Moreover, you said I should have talked to my priest. How about the Russian priest Vladimir Ugruyumov that was a priest for over 15 years and then converted to Islam? Think based hmm. off his comments and content, he would have just became a Muslim already. I mean, he already rejects the Trinity and it rejects all these important orthodox dogmas, but he's saying, oh no, I'm still a Christian. I'm just searching for truth. So first and foremost, little history lesson for Kyle here. You don't have to be a Trinitarian in order to be a Christian. There were Christians that were Unitarian, Gnostic Christians were partially Unitarians as well. But moreover, why I still see myself as a Christian and not as a Muslim is actually very simple because I haven't converted. During my lifetime, Kyle, and I think I'm a little bit older than you, I went through many phases, many stages. I explored Buddhism. I explored Hinduism. I I went to the Amazon jungle and I explored shamanism. Many different spiritual practices, many different ideologies. But nevertheless, during that time, I never converted to Buddhism or Hinduism. And I always saw myself as a Christian, even though I wasn't practicing. This is the simple reason why I still am a Christian. The entire channel is just dedicated towards Islam. And Islam is not the truth. You can watch Orthodox Shahada, Sam Shimon. I have lots of videos on <laughs> Islam. It's a yeah, false religion go, watch that was started in the 600. It has no continuity with the prior teaching. Mm. Yet but yet instead, Christianity, of course, has continuity based upon what exactly? If you see the New Testament and the Old Testament, they stand in stark contradiction to each other. Moreover, if you look into Judaism, which of Christianity is the continued form allegedly, you will, of course, see that they are yet again in absolute contrast to each other. Judaism is about monotheism, about one God, the God of Israel. Israel, you can think about that what you will, and Christianity is about Jesus being God. How is that continuous of the old doctrine? He, he's just milking this niche of, yeah, I'm just searching for truth, guys. Just gaslighting Islam, which is highly irresponsible. Yes. <laughs> now I want to respond to his first video. Please I'm go. a heretic. Kyle, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt because whilst recording this video, you of course couldn't have known it, but I already said it three times here in my video. It becomes very, very cringy, man. You didn't get the joke. I have to speak my mind. I cannot believe it. No matter what I do, I cannot build because i wanted to free myself from man-made structures i wanted to free myself from external belief systems yep. and free myself from religious dogmas ayahuasca yep. shamanism buddhism hinduism etc so you know grandiose absolutely mesmerizing yep. however and now comes the turning point of the story i hadn't heard about the trinity Exactly. So he starts the video by giving off his background. He dove into every dude. My father is 65 years old and he never heard about the Trinity. He is firm in his conviction that he is an Orthodox Christian. Thing, but it seems like he's yes. just trying to make up his own religion. He likes a little bit of that, a little bit of this. No, I actually don't. Not at all. Because this is what I learned within the New Age movement. People started picking and choosing whatever they like. They're going to pick from Buddhism, Hinduism, etc., etc. When I return to Orthodoxy, I want to accept it as a whole and this is why I dug deep into the doctrine did the pilgrimage to Mount Athos etc etc and this is when I found out about the Trinity for the very first time at first I was absolutely shocked how could anybody believe this about God however because it was such an intrinsic part of the faith I had to accept it because I didn't want to cherry pick. I want to accept orthodoxy this time 100%. And for two years straight, I tried to convince myself of the Trinity. I researched, I looked, I talked to church fathers, to monks, etc., etc., you name it. But in the end, I ended up with the same conclusion. It is absolutely irrational, illogical, and I personally cannot believe it. That's it. The aesthetics and chant, which is great. But he says, oh, yeah. no, no, but the Trinity, that doesn't make any sense. I, I Sure. I can't understand. No, to this very day, I appreciate the chants. However, when they are chanting about Jesus being God or that Mother Mary is the mother of God, I simply cannot resonate with it. Nevertheless, aesthetically, yes, it's beautiful. You know what? Buddhism aesthetically is beautiful as well, but I personally do not prescribe to it. I couldn't find an explanation by myself. 
and I couldn't find an explanation within the faith. Really? You couldn't find a single good explanation? You could have no. gone to your local priest and said, hey, can you explain the Trinity? Yes, but that's what I did. And ultimately, they told me it's a mystery. So how is that a good explanation? I'm kind of confused on it. You could have done a Google search, a YouTube search. There are literally so many YouTube oh. videos going into extreme depth of explaining the Trinity. A yes, and none of them make sense. Good way to understand it is we believe in one God. But one what? One essence three persons another way to understand this is the son think of the son as the father the light think of the sun think of an egg right an egg has three parts as well it has the shell it has the egg white it has the egg yolk but all of it is one egg heat as christ and the heat as the holy spirit they are all one and the same but there are real distinctions there aren't three separate suns again this is just an analogy try using a created thing to try and explain the uncreated mm. but since you're considering did you Islam, explain like islam gets out of this they say god is simple god is tahi god is one okay yeah. one what one essence how does allah actually interact with the world and how do you have knowledge of allah and since they claim that moses solomon abraham were actually muslims well then how did the lord appear to moses appear to solomon appear to abraham it makes no sense and it requires a trinity yeah he didn't really see him right in those stories we know that the mountain shatters that God cannot even be perceived so God appears in the form of angels for example it is the same within Islam God transmutes his message through the angel Gabriel so what are you talking about because ultimately it was proposed to me as one of the greatest mysteries but yep. that wasn't and that isn't enough for me truth the essence of truth is always simple it cannot be complicated and it cannot be so complicated that the layman cannot understand it yep. i gave a really easy example that every lay person can understand and every lay person isn't going to be judged on their theological knowledge but what is wrong of you to do is to make a video that will reach thousands of people claiming that i am a heretic and I reject the Trinity Still. for these reasons, while also claiming to be an Orthodox Christian. You should not do that as a layman if you don't know. Kyle, yet again, I clearly distanced myself from being an Orthodox Christian. I said that I come from an Orthodox Christian background. Again, welcome to the channel, Kyle. This is Bobby's perspective. We talk about my story. We talk about my perspective, how I got born as an Orthodox Christian, how I went through the New Age, different spiritual practices, and right. Right now we are exploring Islam. Oh, you could Hello. Have it. Ultimate. I did. Reality. I did. Thank absolute you. Thank you for the tip. Union, absolute perfection. Yep. He has lots of these videos Wrong. of oh I'm a Christian but I reject all the important Christian doctrines and this next one is three reasons he can't accept Orthodox Christianity. Thank you everybody that reached out after my last video. It was absolutely beautiful to see. We had many atheists, <gasps> we had New Agers, we had Jews even, Masonic Jews if I remember correctly. And moreover, we had many Muslims, of course, in the comment section. It was absolutely beautiful. You reject the Trinity and then you get praised by Jews, Muslims, New Agers, and Freemasons. And you say that's a beautiful thing. Freemasons. Really? To see a very interesting exchange of ideas. Of course, we had many haters as well. Eh, you're not a Christian. I still identify as a Christian. However, I do have... And mind you, this was a video recorded before I ever started doing Islamic reaction videos. However, I do have issues with certain... Pro He's doing exactly what these progressive Christians do. Yes, I'm a Christian, but I just reject all of church teaching and I follow myself. And he openly identifies as a heretic. Maybe that's a sign <laughs> that you should do some more research and talk with your priest and it's not... Reach thousands of people with your heresy. That is dangerous for you. It's dangerous <laughs> for other people. And why do you do this? Certain practices. Why do you do this? The why? And with certain practices that people do practice to this very day. Christianity is an all or nothing system. You don't get to pick and choose. Oh, I like that. I like the aesthetic. Which Christianity are we talking about? Protestantism, Catholicism, Orthodoxy, the Jehovah's Witness. So as you can see within Christianity, yes, it is still very much pick and choose. Only if you choose one branch of it, and I agree, of course, within that branch, there is no picking and choosing. We already talked about that. Reject the Trinity. No, you have to submit to what the church teaches. And yes. when you know what the church teaches... And I personally do not submit to it. You reject it, you put yourself outside the church. Exactly it's the same right. thing. Yes, I am outside of the church. I do not visit the church. 
church any longer. With these, you know, leftist, progressive Wrong. Christians. I'm gay. Yeah, I know what the church teaches, but I'm gonna follow myself. Don't do that. The Don't. first Don't and guys. foremost, kissing icons. Yeah. I already know about kissing icons because I grew up in an Orthodox household and it never made any sense to me. And it's still Veneration. kissing Veneration. the icons, but it simply felt wrong. Yeah. That's all I can say. It Probably felt completely sense. wrong. If you're not worshiping the icons, we are venerating mm -hmm. the icons. But guys, <laughs> if you kiss those icons, that is worship in my book. Yes, there is a huge difference between veneration and worship. And just because you think it's worship, yeah. okay, that's, it's not worship, it's veneration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a huge difference between veneration and worship because there is really a huge difference between veneration and worship. What is the difference, Kyle? There is, of course, no answer. It is simply another word that is being used here. You take this icon, you put it into church for over 40 days. In that church, it will be blessed with holy water and with incense and then you take that thing into your household and you attribute certain powers to it you believe that it has certain powers and then you kiss it and you pray in front of it it's not worship kissing icons why we kiss other people lots of different other cultures do that so how can it be inherently wrong to kiss an icon and when we're venerating an icon yeah right kissing your mother kissing your father kissing your wife is exactly the same like kissing a piece of wood exactly the same towards a piece of wood it's towards the person in that piece of wood when we venerate the icon of the theotokos it's all towards mary what is wrong with venerating icon it is not worship this is exactly what is wrong with it you claim not to worship but at the same time you call mother mary theotokos which means the mother of god so you gotta tell me that you're not worshiping her even though she is the mother of god that doesn't make any sense whatsoever in your logic, if you're worshipping God, of course you have to worship his mother. Absolutely nonsensical. This is what is wrong with that. Moreover, of course, as you said yourself, it's not about the piece of wood, but it's about the person within that wood. That is exactly the issue here, because you're attributing certain powers to those people in those depictions. Don't you understand that you're using intermediaries to God? even from the Christian doctrine out on. We are not in paradise. We are not in hell after death. We are in a slumber. That is correct. Look it up yourself. You will see that we are in a slumber, in the grave, so to speak. And if that is the case, then there are no saints whatsoever. All of those people are simply dead. But you do not want to accept that they are dead and therefore you attribute powers to them. You use them to communicate through them to God. Thank God for Islam, because through Islam, I learned this is called shirk. The entire seventh count ecumenical council is about this, about how veneration and worship are two I'm totally sure different is. things. Worship is to God alone. And since you're considering <laughs> Islam, you should look up. Exactly. Worship is to God alone. But do you truly worship God alone? Of course you do not, man. How often do I have to repeat this? You have Jesus. You have Mother Mary, the mother of God. You venerate every everything besides God. Muslims at Mecca kissing the Kaaba, venerating the Kaaba. Everyone wants to put their hand on the Kaaba, circling around the Kaaba. You're comparing apples to oranges. First and foremost, it is not mandatory to kiss the Kaaba. Not at all. It is not part of the faith. However, it is part of the faith within orthodoxy to kiss icons and to kiss the hand of the priest. Moreover, yet again, apples and oranges, because Mecca is a pilgrimage, in some instances a once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage. You, however, kiss those icons every Sunday, man. Veneration, according to you, that's worship. Again, there's a huge difference between veneration and worship, but acting like, oh, I can't accept- Listen, Kyle, I don't have a double standard here. Kissing the Kaaba, for me personally, yes, it's worship too. I personally wouldn't do it. And yet again, it is not part of the religion. Nowhere does it say you have to kiss the Kaaba. Not at all. However, in the church, kissing the icons is part of the mystery. 
history. Put that in Orthodox Christianity, that's pagan. Veneration well, if you become worship. a Muslim, they have the same exact thing. But again, there's a huge difference between veneration and worship. Well, what is the difference? Tell us. And yet again, why is veneration good to begin with? And moreover, no, Muslims do not have the exact same thing. Muslims do not go every Sunday to the Kaaba and kiss the Kaaba. The other thing was kissing the hand of the priest. Yeah, dude. That felt so cultish, so guru-like to me, mm. sin cults. Why would I worship yet again another man? Kissing the bishop's hand is not worship. In lots of different cultures, you kiss people on the cheek. It's just a sign of respect. It's not worship. And again, since yeah, but who cares what you do in culture? Yes, the French people kiss each other on the cheek, males and females. In other cultures, you don't even shake the hand. Why would I take those examples and infuse them into religion? Culture has nothing to do with religion. If you're considering Islam, Islam permits that you can kiss people on the hands. It's not worship. Islam does. Even in Islam. Not in kissing the hands. Hmm. What is it? So for me personally, the turban gave it away. Just a quick Google search will show you that Hafiz Sharif Ali is not a simple Sunni scholar, not your everyday Muslim, but he seems to be part of the Sufi branch of Islam. So no, Kyle, you can't just pick a random bearded guy and claim this is Islam. I can pick a random Christian and claim this is Christianity. We are in the first range of a major flood. It has already begun. Amen. Now I said that by the Holy Ghost. I, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. <laughs> this is me talking, all right? But it, it's, uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm still speaking of the Spirit, but in a, on a different level. It doesn't work that way. Kissing the hands is an act of reverence. It's an act of you being in awe. How of the does person. it? There is is this Islam? Kissing hmm. the hand of any individual. <laughs> this is this is backed up in the hadith. Well. And the last one is eating from the same spoon as twenty other guys. Yeah, it is. And saying that the Not bread my thing. on the spoon is the flesh of Christ. Very strange. And the wine is the blood of. Christ. Yeah. This is another key teaching in Christianity. In scripture, Christ says, this is my body and blood. Those who do not eat and drink of this do yeah, not. Yeah, thanks for helping us out here. It's not that Christ said this. At least we really do not know. However, we do know that John said this. Do not have eternal life. We can read all the church fathers. They affirm the real presence. And yes, it is under the real. guise of bread and wine, but it is spiritual nourishment that we all need. And all these- Fun fact here. Back in the day when I was into the keto diet, carnivore diet, primal diet, I met a bunch of Americans that converted to orthodoxy. Even though they were promoting Christian orthodoxy on YouTube, none of them fasted. Why is that so? Because the orthodox fast is plant-based, pretty much vegan. However, they were used to eating a lot of meat and then they would wrestle with their faith and tell themselves, oh, why does God want this from me? How can I abstain from this healthy, nourishing food? So they would intuitively understand that bread and alcohol are among the worst substances that you can put into your body. Those guys intuitively understood it. Everybody knows, man, bread is absolutely horrible for you and so is alcohol. But now somehow magically we're going to say it's healthy and moreover spiritual nourishment. Not even the orthodox converts adhere to this doctrine. Important doctrines that he rejects like the Trinity, we mm, affirm not it only me. every service. We say it in the creed that you have to I know you the do. Trinity. And yes, even before I'm receiving aware. communion, we have the pre-communion prayer that yes. I believe, O oh Lord, that I confess, etc., etc. We confess. <laughs> Cetera, cetera. This is the true body and blood of Christ, that it is spiritual nourishment. Yes, I'm very well aware, and this is something that I personally cannot believe. It sounds not only cultish, but satanic to me. So you may find that hard to believe, mm. and you may not like it, but again, you could have asked your priest, you could have Googled online, you could I have, have no found internet, YouTube Kyle. videos on no this, access, bro. you could have read the church fathers and elders, but instead you make no a books. video reaching thousands Can't. of people, which is Can't irresponsible. Read. So how can it be the flesh of Christ? I had to make myself believe that again. 
Yeah. Ultimately, I didn't believe it. How did Christ turn water into wine? How did the universe come to be in the first place? Why is there a universe at all? There's all of these mystery that maybe we can't fully understand because we have a finite human mind, but through prayer. Okay, so you have a finite human mind. You cannot understand those mysteries, but somehow you believe that you understand that the only way for God to communicate with his creation is through a trinity. You cannot accept that he could potentially communicate with his creation through his unity. That is a mystery that you won't accept, but all the other mysteries. Yes, please. Fasting and repentance through reading the church church fathers and elders, you can come to understanding of these. Controversial <laughs> topic oh. during mushroom experiences as well. I know that many religious folks don't want to hear it and I haven't touched mushrooms in over two years, but yep. I cannot discard now it's even longer, almost three years. During those mushroom experiences, I had many encounters with God. And even after that, in a sober state, I had encounters with God again. And God was always the perfect unity. Actually, the only perfect unity there is. There is nothing like him. Yep. Absolutely nothing. I can say with confidence that I encountered God. His basis for rejecting Christianity in the Trinity is because, oh, he did mushrooms and he felt God's unity. See how he picks and chooses here? Yes, I mentioned spiritual experiences, but in the same breath, I mentioned in a sober state as well. Even if you think about it rationally, you will come to the same conclusion. We need a point of origin for this universe. If we track the causal chains back, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, we're going to end up at the first cause. The first first cause has to be uncreated. And even Christians will agree with that. And this is why they claim that Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they are all uncreated. However, you already have a mental construct put in place here, Jesus, and therefore you already know that this is something created. Jesus cannot be this first cause because it is already a mental construct. You can already imagine Jesus and therefore it cannot be God. Even within your own Bible, you will find that there is nothing like God and that God God certainly is not a man. Since the real God, so the simple. Trinity, isn't like that, well, he rejects that. Well, if you look into orthodoxy, read orthodoxy in the religion of the future. Oh, I you're very skeptical of everything. You don't go searching for an experience, especially mm. in psychedelics. That's mm. how you get a demonic experience. But he's mm. saying, no, I know God. Okay, how do you know that's God? When all of the orthodox elders... Even the Bible says, be still and know God. That is pre -led. Adapted beliefs from other men. And because you're not convinced... Exactly. He's simply just proving my point. You read the church fathers and now you believe this is your opinion. It's not your opinion, Kyle. It's the church fathers. Those That's it. And those convictions, you want to force them upon me. You don't even know me. For you, I'm just digital on a screen. But you want me, that digital character, to believe what you think you believe. This just shows how weak you are. It's my That's weakness true. for calling out your error, for you not being able to understand this. I'm the weak person for trying to correct you because you're reaching thousands of people. And let's say you do become Muslim. But yet again, Kyle, I'm not claiming to be orthodox, nor am I teaching a different version of orthodoxy. Hence, yet again, the hereticism is a cheeky joke. For the thousand and thirty-seventh time, Kyle, all I'm doing here on this channel is sharing what I do. This is literally it. So yes, I was an Orthodox Christian from birth out on, stopped practicing within my 20s, returned to it in my 30s and found it to be flawed. This is it. I am not claiming orthodoxy. I am not here to change orthodoxy, nor do I think of myself so highly that I believe I would be even able to change orthodoxy. Orthodoxy has been established with the creeds. That's that. If you want to follow it, have fun. You teach error as a Muslim, other Muslims are going to call you out. Are you going to call them weak Exactly. Too? No. No, I wouldn't because if I would claim this is Islam, they should call me out. If I would claim that this here is orthodoxy, you should call me out. I am not claiming orthodoxy. Weak too? No. Christians have a duty to correct people who are in error. You have openly said you are a heretic and I want to help <laughs> you and you need to realize Thank you, what Kyle. you're teaching is Thanks. dangerous and wrong. Thank God we have Kyle, man.
Oh, so that looks pretty cool. And he ends the video by mixing a clip of orthodox aesthetics with psychedelics, which you should not do, but it's reflective sure. of what he does. Who said that exactly? Moreover, this is footage that I filmed myself on Mount Athos. So this is simply what I filmed myself and found aesthetically pleasing. Is this a scene, Kyle? He picks and chooses. Oh, I like these orthodox aesthetics and chants. Mixing that with, I felt God in the mushrooms, in the psychedelics, and now it's Islam, and just pursuing truth. But what he ends up doing is just making his own religion, just following him. Kyle, appreciating aesthetics does not mean someone makes up their own religion. I do appreciate the aesthetics of Lamborghinis. Does that mean Lamborghinis are my god? I do appreciate the aesthetics of Buddhist temples, even though I would never subscribe to Buddhism. Even Hindu temples are nice to look at sometimes, but I do not subscribe to Hinduism. It is simply aesthetically pleasing to me. And even if you take those orthodox chants and you play it to Muslims, guess what? They find them beautiful as as well. All that being said, you absolutely mischaracterized me here because I'm absolutely opposed to picking and choosing. I come from a spiritual background and within the new age, I saw what happened when people started picking and choosing. How a little bit of Buddhism, a little bit of Hinduism, a little bit of meditation, a little bit of channeling, etc, etc, etc. And then they made it into a new religion. This is what I personally detest and this is why I returned to orthodoxy and I wanted to commit 120%. I did it all. As I said, the pilgrimage, I attended the church service, the daily prayers, the fasting as well. And then in the end came to the realization that there are so many man-made components that I cannot live with. I saw so much idolatry within that doctrine that I cannot accept it. And this is why I am out of it, Kyle. Yet again, I'm not picking and choosing here. Quite the opposite. This is why I got interested in Islam. And this is why I am learning about Islam. I'm not taking bits and pieces of Islam and I'm going to intermix it. Maybe I'm going to take some LSD and then go to to the mosque. Of course not. Right now, I'm 100% focused on Islam. The of God versus the actual God, the revealed God in submitting to the church. In all of Where does he reveal himself? Even Jesus never talked about the Trinity. Wouldn't you think if it is such an important part of the doctrine, Jesus would have mentioned it? Versus the actual <clears throat> God, the revealed God in submitting to the church. Submitting to the church, exactly right. Not submitting to God like it is done in Islam, but submitting to the church. He answered, oh, there's so many good YouTube videos that explain all of the critiques about the Trinity, about <laughs> what he doesn't understand about orthodoxy. Yeah. And a lot of these things, it's not like you become a Muslim and these issues don't go away, you know, with veneration as if Tawheed is do. so much more simpler than the Trinity. These don't get solved. Yeah, but it's actually way easier. Tawheed, one God, or the Trinity, three gods in one. To make a part two and a part three on Bobby because okay, he's made bro. so many bad videos. And if he's watching this, Hello. you know, I just, you need to realize that what you're doing is very dangerous for your soul and the souls of others. Please pray for Thank him. you, Kyle. I hope you enjoyed the video. God bless. God bless you. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I have to say, I really like Kyle and I wish him well. Seeing him, I don't see a bad person. I simply see a young kid that is extremely pious and strict about his newfound belief. It is understandable. As I said, I met many Americans that converted to orthodoxy and therefore became very zealous about it at first. They thought that this is the truth. I can relate because I thought it's the absolute truth. However, researching further, I of course saw the flawed aspects of it. For example, alcohol in itself. When I visited Mount Athos, many priests were actually drunk. Even at the baptism of my son back in the day, the priest was drunk. This is when I realized that the devil has infiltrated the church because it is a slippery slope. Why would you allow alcohol in the religion of God? We all know that it is a slippery slope for people. And I met them. I saw them firsthand. As I said, priests and monks absolutely drunk. Anyways, the video is long enough as it is. I'm going to cut it off here. Yet again, Kyle, no hard feelings whatsoever. Quite the opposite. You're invited on this channel if you like. We can discuss your path to orthodoxy, my path to orthodoxy, and out of it, Islam, etc., etc. You are absolutely invited to come on the show. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.